This video is brought to you by Springboard. If you're considering kickstarting a new career in machine learning, Springboard has helped its graduates do just that. Tracks for going from developer to proficient data scientist are among the many options offered. Springboard allows you to learn in-demand skills with online courses and provides mentoring by industry professionals. Springboard prepares you for rewarding jobs at top employers. Certain tracked programs include job guarantees, and many of the graduates have landed jobs at companies including Google, IBM, Visa, Salesforce, and anymore. Check the link in the description for more information. In this series of videos, we're going to be building a neural network model to classify images of clothing, something like sneakers, shirts, pants. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take uh, an image data set. So a data set that we're about to look at right now, which is just an, uh, a collection of images that have these sorts of articles of clothing. We're going to train our neural network on these images. And the expected outcome for us is this neural network is going to be responsible for given a piece of clothing, given an article of clothing or an image that corresponds to that, output a number that determines what this neural network thinks it is. So this neural network is going to be a classification model that's going to look at an article of clothing and figure out what it is. Uh, and then this whole series of videos is going to be how we go about that process, how we go about feeding in the data, et cetera, et cetera. So the data set that we will be using for the series of videos is called Fashion MNIST. I'll leave a link to this in the description of this video. However, we will be not uh, cloning this repository directly. We'll be loading it in via TensorFlow. So the neural network model that we'll be creating in this series of videos is going to be using TensorFlow and uh, in Python. And we'll see how to do that all from the ground up. Just to go very quickly through this data set, uh, this Fashion MNIST data set is very well known. It's used a lot, uh, especially kind of as a hello world type of program for neural network type applications. And this is really what it is. It's just a collection of images, black and white images that correspond to, you can see shirts, pants, sneakers, purses, things like that. And there's a lot of very interesting things that people have done to this data to try and classify it. Uh, what we're gonna be doing, as we mentioned before, is building a neural network to try to uh, classify that data. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm just gonna navigate over to my terminal here. I've just opened up a Python file uh, just somewhere on my uh, desktop or some folder. You can call it whatever you like. I called it fashion underscore mnist.py. I'm going to be using Vim. If you like the way that I have Vim configured for Python development, you can check out the link in the description to this video to get your Vim set up in the same way. Uh, otherwise, if you're using Sublime Text, Idle, PyCharm, or anything like that, any of those will be just fine uh, and will allow you to follow along. So in order for us to get started here, we're going to need to uh, essentially install some modules. I'm going to assume that you've Python installed and also pip, which is the package manager for Python. So if you have both of those things ready to go, then we can go ahead and install these modules that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear my terminal and I'm going to say pip install. The first thing that we'll need is TensorFlow. So if you followed other videos on my channel before, you probably already have this installed. And indeed, since I already have it installed, I get requirement already satisfied. If you don't, you'll see some installation happen. We also want to install NumPy. So let's just go ahead and say pip install NumPy. It'll do the same thing. Again, I already have this, so it's not going to install anything. The last thing that we're going to need for some of the things that we're going to do later, where we actually want to plot uh, such a how well our neural network model is performing is matplotlib. So we're going to say pip install matplotlib to get us the plotting uh, libraries. And again, you might have these installed already. Uh, what we can do to kind of check to make sure that all of these modules have been properly installed is we can go ahead and say import tensorflow as tf. So we're going to use tf as kind of a shorthand to refer to any of the modules that are part of the tensorflow uh, module. And then we're going to say from tensorflow import Keras. Keras is kind of its own thing. Uh, TensorFlow provides a window or kind of an API to some of the functionality of Keras. It's sort of its own separate machine learning type of um, collection of uh, files and functions and whatnot. And we're going to be using TensorFlow to access some of that. Uh, we'll see how we do that later. And if you've seen some of the other machine learning videos on this channel, uh, you've also seen us use this as well. The other thing that we're going to be importing here is NumPy. So we'll say import NumPy as NP. And then we'll also say import matplotlib at pyplot. We'll say dot pyplot here like that. And we'll do this as PLT so we can refer to that as a shorthand. So let's just go ahead and also print out the version of TensorFlow just to make sure that we're operating with the same version. So I'll say print, see that right here, print tf dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. And what we'll do is we'll write that and we'll say Python fashion and NIST just to run it. We'll see what we get here and we should get 
hopefully no errors if you've installed one of the modules. And it looks like I installed, or I didn't install, I missed a B, or I added a B unnecessarily there. So map plot lib, I should say lib, we'll do that. Try this again, print out the version of TensorFlow, and hopefully we won't get any errors this time. So we see that the version, the version that I'm running is 1.13.1 and everything seemed to import just fine because we're getting no errors so we're good to go so the next thing that we're going to do is actually import that fashion amnist data set that we saw on the uh, browser window and we don't need to download or clone the repository actually the tensorflow module allows us to very nicely just import them into our um, into our project here. So this is really just kind of a very good hello world application and this is going to allow us to really uh, kind of dive deeply into what a neural network can do. So we get rid of this print statement just because we don't need that anymore and I'm going to go ahead and uh, define a variable called fashion underscore mnist and I'm going to set this equal to keras.datasets dot fashion mnist. So again the keras.datasets uh, part of keras that we're importing there uh, there's a number of different data sets that come from this. If you looked at a previous series of videos, we did this for, for another uh, data set. And if you want to check out what other data sets that are offered, which I encourage you to do because there's a lot of them that offer kind of a nice playground for these sorts of things, go ahead and just Google Keras data sets and you'll probably find uh, the entire list of all of the data sets that Keras offers to us. So what I've done there is I've just stored the uh, essentially the object that Keras.datasets.fashion mnist is going to provide to us and put it into the fashion mnist variable. So what we want to do now is we want to kind of split the uh, data. We want to actually load it in and split it into uh, a set of training data and testing data. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two sets of tuples. So we'll do train underscore images comma train underscore labels. So this is the first tuple set and then what we'll do is we'll do test underscore images and then test underscore labels like that. And we'll set this equal to fashion mnist.load underscore data and it's a function. So the fashion and this object that we created up above has a method called load data. What we're doing is we're storing each of those into two sets of tuples. The first set of tuples is the training set, second is the testing set. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, really these tuples contain two things, the images, so the first component of each of the tuples contains the actual images and then the labels, the respective labels for each of the two tuples are, are just numeric uh, lists that just contain the uh, information that what that image corresponds to. So we'll talk a little bit more about how each of those images are encoded and what those numbers correspond to. So let's just go ahead and run this first and we'll see if this works. So we'll say python fashion and nist. We'll run this. We should see some downloading happening. The nice thing about this is once it happens, once you don't need to worry about it loading the data every single time. I've already downloaded this data before so I didn't see any uh, downloading data from wherever. So it's already on my machine. It's just access which is very nice because it's much quicker than downloading every single time. And now what we want to do is we want to uh, kind of explore and figure out what is the what is the data that we just loaded in here? So the data sets really, train images and train labels are arrays, they're NumPy arrays, and they're known as the training set, and that's what the model is going to be using to learn. So the model is also going to be tested against the test images and the test labels, and that is something that we keep from our model that we kind of verify it on. So once we've trained our model on the training data, we want to figure out how well did it actually do based on this testing data that we've obscured from it. So what are these uh, NumPy arrays actually, what do they consist of? So training images, testing images, both of those variables in, this, in the first part of each of those tuples, those are the images themselves. And the way those images are represented are as 28 by 28 NumPy arrays. The, uh, each of those 28 by 28 arrays have some number, which is a pixel value from zero to 255. And that collection of information allows us to represent an image. So let me just go ahead and say print train images of zero. It's going to give us the first uh, the first component of that. So train images again is a NumPy array. We're just looking at the very first component of that and we can see it's got a lot of numbers. This is the uh, numeric representation of the picture for the first image. Likewise if we say train labels so labels, let's do the first labels there. What that's going to do is that is going to be a in a, a single number which is going to correspond to what that is marked as. So if that's a shirt, uh, you know, a pullover, a dress, a coat, whatever, that will have a numeric code associated to it that that image corresponds to. So in this case the number is 9 
and that means that that corresponds in this case to an ankle boot. How do I know that? Well, what we can do is we can check the uh, data set. This is all kind of outlaid on the uh, GitHub for that. So each of the labels has a numeric value from zero to nine. And what I'll do is I'll provide that numeric mapping in the description because I think it's a little bit easier. Actually, what I can do right now is just copy it over just so you can see exactly what, uh, what this corresponds to. I'm just gonna do a new tab and then I'm just going to paste this in here. So what we have here is we have the label on the left side and then the class, the item that it corresponds to. So for instance, if the label is zero, that corresponds to a t-shirt or a top. If the label is nine, which in the case of the first image it was, that means it's ankle boot, an ankle boot. Otherwise, uh, any of these other numeric labels just correspond to the respective classes that this mapping uh, has. So this mapping kind of comes stock with the data set that we downloaded. That is the way that they've encoded this and that's the way that we're going to uh, sort of use that information to train our neural network. So I'm just going to go ahead and quit out of that. Again, I'll leave that in the description so that way you have some context for what each of these labels correspond to. So just for us, for our purposes, what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, list, which we'll call class names. This is just going to be a list of names that are going to correspond to each of the 10 items that it could possibly be. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy this over. Uh, I'm going to remove this here, and I'm just going to copy in the list class names, and that corresponds to a list of strings, where each of the items in this list is a string that corresponds to each of the classes. So again, if it's zero, t-shirt top, one, trouser, two, pullover, etc. So that's going to be kind of our list of class names. So this is pretty much it for the first video. We've kind of installed any of the relevant modules that we'll be using in the remainder part of this video. We've loaded in the data, the MNIST fashion data, and then we've kind of explored a little bit of it. What we're going to be doing in the next video is we're actually going to be going a little bit deeper in terms of what the data is. So we're going to be exploring that at a deeper level to kind of understand what we have access to and to get some sense as to how we're going to use that to build our model. So that's it for this video. The code as always is going to be on my GitHub. You can check that out there. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.